Hey, what's up? It is time to do another 3D print. So I've been on a little um, RC kick lately, I guess you could say. Um, it's kind of related to the whole nice weather thing. I'm finally getting some spring temperature. Spring temperatures outside, so um, I've been wanting to go out and mess around with RC stuff. And so um, I decided to build a 150 millimeter that be motor to motor. Obviously, this isn't square, but uh, 150 millimeter motor to motor quadcopter because they're tiny but uh, despite being this small I mean it's not much bigger than my hand uh, they still run brushless motors so these things have some serious power and actually this is the lipo that I test flow it with uh, it has some serious power um, but the only thing that's not complete with this uh, it flies fine already so right now I can fly it but I can't fly it using FPV through the goggles because the camera um, it's you gotta kind of find your own way to mount it and a lot of people rig something up with like cardboard rubber bands whatever but uh, I figure if I own a 3d printer I might as well utilize it so I figured I would um, design a really quick and simple mount I was thinking something that this either has two s slots that grab the edges of the board and then has some kind of a flat bottom that I can zip tie to the bottom of the frame um, cause it's just, it's too, it's too wide and it's too tight in here to fit everything. Cause let me, <laughs> let me give you a rundown of everything that's in here. So you kind of have a rough idea of how tight this is. So just above the strap, that's the PDB. And it also has two, uh, five volt linear regulators in parallel to power, um, most of most, most everything on here, the video transmitter is the only exception, but so uh, that's that's the PDB that all the, all four ESCs are hooked up to. So the ESCs I mounted on the arms because that's really the only place I have to fit them. And then there's some standoffs, some nylon standoffs, and directly above that is the flight controller. Uh, it's 32-bit STM. Um, it's it's a pretty decent board. This is probably my favorite because it's really easy to use. You slap it in there, and with default settings, it flies great. Now this is the only exception. This frame is so small that I'm gonna have to turn down some of the uh, PID gains because it's oscillating a little bit. And then um, right here, directly above this, I just have a little double-sided tape holding it in place. Is the receiver, and then it communicates with the flight controller using serial. Um, and then you got the video transmitter back here and the camera, and the video transmitter has its own regulator in it to uh, give uh, the camera four volts. And the, the video transmitter actually is powered directly off of the uh, battery. It, it has its own regulation on board, so it can handle a pretty wide voltage range. And that's it, but everything is just jam-packed in there. There's absolutely no room. So, and these are the obviously the antennas for the receiver, antenna for the video transmitter. There's not a lot of room in here, and I've already got some zip ties holding things down so they don't come up and get into the props, which they shouldn't because the, the wind would be blowing down, but there will be a lot of turbulence. So um, I still need to get some way to mount this, and I want it angled. And 30 degrees so far for me has been fine as a somewhat of a beginner. I've, I've never done a race yet, I've, uh, but I'm interested in it, and there's some local groups um, that I've been chatting with, and, and they, they get together to do some races, so I thought... Might as well build one and get to practicing and then maybe show up for a race by the end of the season. But um, 30 degrees might not be enough whenever I get to that point. But for now, 30 degrees uh, camera angle is perfect. And if you haven't seen my other videos, it's because uh, unlike an airplane, um, all the propellers are aimed up. So to fly forward, you have to lean it forward. And if you lean it forward to go really fast, the camera is now aimed at the ground. So that's why you get an, like a 30 degree mount or so to where whenever you're flying forward, you're seeing straight ahead and um, and really whenever you're flying one of these things you're always going forward you r rarely hover especially if you have an angled mount because then you'd just be um, looking up at the sky but anyway um, instead of trying to rig something up I decided in that tiny amount of space that I ought to be able to come up with a real really really simple design so it was either to get something that's got two slots on to grab the edges of the camera board or the option I think I'm a little more interested in is to get a C snap that like snaps around because the end of the lens is bigger around than the middle part. So I figured uh, I get something that just snaps into the middle part and holds it in place and then maybe have it curve around to the back here and then have like a groove around it to where I can fit a cable tie over it. And uh, you can't see it because I have the bottom covered in like a foam. That way when the battery is strapped onto here it doesn't slide off because 
these battery straps don't offer much grip. So with this cupboard, you can't really see it here. You probably can't see it there. But kind of like this, the, the bottom plate's a little different, but kind of like the top plate here, there's there's like a, there's a solid bar that goes through the middle and then there's two holes on each side. So I just need something that has a little thing that goes into the two holes on the sides. That way it kind of keys itself in there and keeps itself straight. So no matter how acrobatic I'm flying this thing, um, the camera will stay completely steady. Because obviously if I didn't have anything to key it, even if I have it strapped down, it can still move around a few degrees, and I don't want that, because that'll really throw off uh, your flying and your video. So I say we head to the head to the old computer and sketch this up, and I think this should be a really easy one. I say that, but I mean, there's not going to be a lot of material, and I might not even need supports depending on how I position it and design it, but... Yeah, let's uh, go give it a whirl. Okay, so as you just saw, I uh, struggled a little bit. I said it was going to be easy, but I, I kept fumbling around a little bit. But uh, this is what I came up with. The original one, I just had the camera too close to the bottom part that mounts to the, the frame. So uh, I, the, the bottom of the camera had nowhere to go. And plus, uh, this microphone is actually... Actually, did that turn out? Yeah, it did. Um, the microphone is actually on the bottom so I needed to make a little indent here I don't know if you saw that uh, it really depends on how much I speed this up whenever I end up editing the final video but because you know you don't want to sit there for an hour and a half two hours and watch me design it in real time that would be terribly boring so I guess the moment of truth well I, I tried to clean the support material up and it's still pretty rough so maybe I can there's still something on there you know I, I want to get it that's the downside to printing a support material is that it just makes the bottom really, really dirty. Even even if you don't use support, even if you just use rafts, uh, the bottom just is not as clean as if you print straight on the build surface. But I don't have a heated build platform because SnakerBot didn't include one. But uh, so that's man, that's gonna be a tight squeeze. Unfortunately, there's just not a lot of room in here, so uh, the camera might not be fully protected. I might, I could print something maybe to hook up to the top that, or snaps over the front that maybe protects it, but I don't anticipate on crashing this too much. I'll, I'll fly it easy, plus it's so small that even when you do proximity flying, uh, it's so tiny that it should fit through a bunch of different gaps, but I guess we'll go ahead and snap it on here and see if it even fits. See if I can do this without breaking it. Does it fit? Hmm. I have a feeling that might happen. I just used a little too much material in here, so there's no flex to it. I should have made the sides thinner um, to where it, it can flex, because it's it's not snapping onto there. But I think... Oh, I overdid it. Oops. Well, I can make it look prettier later or reprint it, but... Ugh. Yeah, I don't want 
<laughs> don't want to break the camera in the process, but I do want to get this thing airborne. And being lighter and smaller, there, there's, you know, there's <laughs> less inertia, less mass. Uh, should be less damage when you crash. The downside, though, is that these, like the the top frame plate thinks like half mil, the bottom one's a mil, and then the arms are two mil, I think. And they're just way too thin. But, you know, you want to keep these light. A lot of people are able to get these under the half pound limit for the FAA registration. This one with this specific battery is right on the money. So I don't, <laughs> I don't know if I should put the registration on there or not. I think I might just order some smaller batteries. It doesn't matter. It's just that it's kind of fun to see if you can uh, see if you can get it under the limit or the threshold I guess there we go look at that might reprint it because it's kinda well actually I don't know if I care that much I say I don't but I man that's, that is gonna be tough to get the uh, the cable ties in there but if I can get the cable ties in there this is going to be freaking awesome so uh, I might speed this part up depending on how long it takes me to get this on here but uh I figured I'd use one of these. Sorry, I'm just trying to figure out what to do with these. I don't want these flapping around. I like how everything else is really neat and tidy, but this isn't, so. I think I'm gonna hook it up to this. Yeah. So, it's really hard to tell from my monitor what you can see in frame, so if you can't see any of this, I apologize. I'm just trying to get this. There we go. That keeps the wires kind of out of the way. The white one's longer for some reason. There we go. Look at that. Nice and tidy. And then cut this off. Make sure I don't accidentally cut the antenna. That would suck. It's got two antennas because it's got a diversity receiver. So whichever one's got the the uh, higher gain, it's the one it uses. Uh, so I only did a half mil indent for the. Uh, the cable tie to go over and that's just not quite enough. So if I if I reprint this I'll I'll move it that down to one mil. That way there's a big enough groove for the cable tie to sit on. But I, I don't think it's gonna be a problem. One thing I think I will do is get a piece of the foam and then put it on the bottom. So when I do zip tie this onto here it'll uh actually let me just remove this. Oh I I can cut a new piece. No big deal. I have a whole huge roll of this crap I bought on Amazon. It's a really, really like thin and it, it, it almost feels like putty, this uh, foam. Oh, and don't hate, if, if you're into RC and quadcopters, you see this is DJI. Uh, I, I think that came with my, uh, the NASA controller I got a long time ago. I was gonna do it like an aerial photography. Well, I mean, I have done, but it's the only one that would fit this frame because it's so small. The other ones had too much slack and the uh, the hook and the loop parts wouldn't meet up without it going around it a second time and there's just it was just no way of doing it. Anyway, now we have access to this. So you can actually see what I meant by uh, this little middle bar that this is going to straddle. Yeah, and that almost needs to be a hair bigger too. Yeah, I, I think I need to reprint this. So uh, it, it fits-ish if I tweak the top part here and if um, I make these bottom parts shorter somehow. 
Oh, and I need a bigger indent for the um, the cable ties. So there's actually something it'll sit into. That way, it actually holds it into place. I mean, I don't I don't think it'll be a problem, but it's kind of one of those perfectionist things. So uh, I guess I'll go do that, and I will be back. All right, I am back, and I pulled the uh, the raft off it, and then some of the support material. Uh, but I've not done a test fit yet, so figured I'd do that live. Oh, that's gonna suck if I can't get this one off. It did kind of snap into place, so. Oh. It's good, okay. Pretty similar, I just removed a lot of material. Uh, before I even try to put that on there, I'm gonna make sure with these fit the straddles yep so that straddles that fine perfect so now it's got a decent groove for the uh, cable tie I think I think it's good to go assuming I got enough material off there for this to snap on this time yeah except the microphone Cool. So it, it fits. Now I just need to. Hmm. Maybe I'll get this through first. And then kind of make it a big loop. Oh, duh. It has to go over. There we go. Oh, that fits wonderfully. Oh, dang it. Sorry, if, if this isn't in view, this is really, really hard to get this. So if it's in there, I just need to put some kind of foam or something so that it doesn't move. I just, I can't, it's really hard to get cable ties, even these little thin ones to bend around the corner. Really, now that I think about it, to help prevent damage, it might actually be, instead of using a cable tie, there could could be benefit to just using double-sided tape to hold this in place. I didn't really think about that, but... One thing I'm gonna do is bundle these wires together. Hopefully with them all together, there'll be more strength and I won't actually rip the wires at any point. Yeah, let's let's do double sided tape. So I already have to have my drawer out. Mm, we'll stick with the good 3M stuff. I feel like the 3M stuff has uh, more bite. See, if I'm going to use this now, I feel like I should just get rid of the little tabs. You know what? Before, before, well, before I put this on there, I'm going to try a cable tie one more time. I just, I would really like to just do it the way I designed it. And again, I'll 
obviously speed this up in post-processing if this takes me way too long because it could be kind of boring watching me do this. Come on. Ow. Uh, the corner of that is really sharp. but not much. Damn it. Sucks too because I mean it fits. It fits nicely. I just can't get the cable tie to be tight enough around there to hold it into place. I don't know what to do. Don't know what to do. Um, hmm. I feel like it's cheating and forfeiting to just use double-sided tape, but it would technically be safer in a crash, so I think I'm just gonna, and I don't know if I'm gonna waste time reprinting it a third time, if the tape seems to hold it. But I feel like I should take the little nub off the bottom so that way there's more surface area for more surface area for the uh, tape to bite if that makes any sense done there uh, decently well just to make sure it's straight but yeah so the camera has very 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 little weight no mass and that is on there very well. So I, I'm happy with that, I guess. <laughs> it would have been would have been happier if it would have uh, just worked with the cable tie the way I designed it, but sometimes you have to imp improvise. Sometimes you fail. Here's a, an example of me failing, but eh, it's a part of uh, making and learning. So uh, yeah, hopefully that was interesting to somebody. Uh, my build is complete. Oops, I need to tighten that back on there. It's really hard to get these SMA connectors tight, and I feel like it's sacrilege to use any kind of Loctite on them since it's actually an electrical connector too. But uh, anyway, um, hopefully I don't end up making this video too long. I'm going to try to trim it down as much as possible, but leave in the good stuff. So yeah, um, sorry I keep doing these 3D print videos. It's just that during the build, I see an opportunity to 3D print something, and then I figured, hey, why not? Some people do find this interesting and message me and tell me that they do like seeing these videos. So. Uh, as long as I keep finding things to 3D print, I'll keep 3D printing. Hopefully I can get some non-3D printing videos out sometime. It's just been really busy. And so, yeah. See you in the next video. Bye.